answer, COVID, crisis. What do all these words have in common? You guessed it. They all start with the letter C. If you know someone who has cancer or COVID, you know how devastating these diseases can be. But there's a much bigger crisis that is likely to jeopardize the survival of every single human being, plant, animal, bird, and fish. It's got two C's: the climate crisis, and it's coming to a doorstep near you. So why isn't this climate crisis being taken seriously? Two hundred years ago, German scientist Daniel Fahrenheit invented the thermometer. Every home has one, because. If the fever of your child or loved one goes up by only two degrees, they could burn up and get really sick. But what good is a thermometer if you can't stop the fever? We've all seen those terrifying fires recently, rapidly spreading from California to Oregon. To Washington, even our pristine Vancouver has topped the list of cities with the worst air quality. We were suddenly in the red zone, warned of adverse health effects. From green to yellow to red, just like those traffic lights. So I ask you. What are you doing, as this beloved Mother Earth of ours is burning up? By the end of this century, our Earth will get warmer by two degrees Celsius. The same amount of temperature would go up during a fever. Our Earth, just like someone with a fever, is sick and in need of our urgent help. Climate change is the mother of all crises. It's a worldwide crisis. Changes in weather are threatening food production. If you go without food for just one day, you will likely cry in anguish. Imagine food or water shortages lasting months or even years. Without drastic action today, tomorrow will be much more difficult and costly. Tomorrow may be too late. Global warming's ugly sister is pollution. You and I are polluting the air, land, and water with excessive plastic, garbage, noise, and heat. Single-use and disposable plastics are the worst culprits. Have you noticed how big and full your garbage bins are getting? And don't forget that those bins themselves are made of plastic. Over eight million metric tons of plastic alone is dumped into our oceans every day. That's the weight of fifty-six African bush elephants, going from your home to the stomach of seven hundred species of fish and bird life. My friends and I can only do so much. When I was in grade three, my class participated in a garbage cleanup at Ambleside Beach. We grabbed our recyclable bags, put on our gloves, and started looking for garbage. Soon enough, a friend of mine found a huge, rotting tire stuck between two logs. Ew! Obviously, 
the tire didn't drive to the beach by itself. Soon, our bags were full with cigarettes, plastic and glass bottles, aluminum cans, plastic packaging, snack wrappers, even a pair of dirty underwear. Disgusting. Our ten bags were so heavy. We had to ask our teachers to help carry them. As I filled my first full garbage bag, seagulls started to swoop around me, squawking. I wondered, are the seagulls now eating our garbage? Because the polluted waters are killing their natural habitat and food. Ironically, the more I tried to clean up the beach, the more I wanted to throw up on it. When I got back to school, I felt angry, angry at people just carelessly chucking their trash onto the ground, not realizing the extent of harm that they are doing to our planet and their communities. Since then, I have grown more passionate for birds and fish, and more passionate for the environment. Last year, I participated in a climate march from the city hall to the Vancouver Public Library. This year, on what was supposed to be the Earth Day assembly, my friend Anna and I were to deliver a presentation about plastic pollution. Even though we weren't able to because of the pandemic, I am not giving up, and I hope you're not either. These days, people love sharing fun facts, but this is not a fun fact. One glass bottle takes one million years to decompose. But only one second to be thrown away as garbage. Around two hundred fifty thousand kilograms of glass bottles end up in landfills every day. That's the size of an entire airplane. Well. You may wonder, why worry about plastic when it doesn't affect us? Well, according to the World Wildlife Foundation, one fourth of all fish have plastic in their gut. Not only can plastic be in our food supply, like in fish, we could also be drinking plastic, because eighty-three percent of tap water samples. Contain some microplastic. In total, one million marine creatures die from plastic debris each year. But that's not a surprise when there are around forty-six thousand pieces of plastic in every square mile of the ocean. If an entire species dies off, that could severely mess up ecosystems by distorting the food chain. Oh, and did you know that by 2050, scientists predict that without action, there may be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Imagine a world full of plastic fish. Furthermore, when plastic is produced, factories release harmful chemicals such as CO2. CO2 rises into our atmosphere, keeping more heat inside of Earth. That heat then melts Earth's polar ice caps. In fact, 146 gigatons of Antarctica's ice melts into our Earth's oceans every year. As a result, 
NASA says that the average sea level is expected to rise one to eight feet by the end of this century. Entire cities, or even countries, may disappear. Millions will be displaced or homeless. Where are we going to go? To Mars? Enough about man-made problems. Let's come up with some man-made solutions to this crisis. Number one: reduce, reuse, recycle. Say no to plastic bags and packaging. Say yes to cloth and canvas bags. Start a compost bin. Eat less meat. Conserve energy. Reduce your water and paper use. Borrow instead of buying. Bike instead of driving. Number two, participate in cleaning up beaches, parks, and other public spaces. The more others see you doing it, the less they will pollute, and the more they will join you in a cleanup. Number three, join and support environmental groups. Discuss and learn new methods of improving our environment. Donate to organizations such as WWF, the Sierra Club, Greenpeace, the David Suzuki Foundation, or even organize your own. Remember, together is better. When you are passionate about stopping climate change, you will find imaginative solutions to stopping it. But being passionate is not enough. Take action, model good behavior, and spread the message that with everyone's help, we can defeat climate change. Human beings created this mess. So human beings must clean it up, and I believe that we can flatten the curve for climate change. Let's get Mother Earth's fever under control before it gets out of control. Do it for yourself and your children, and your children's children. Do it. For all of Mother Earth's children, remember, you can make a difference and stop climate change.